So the book I've chosen for today is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. It looks like this. And I'm going to read you a little synopsis on the inside cover of what the book's about. 16-year-old Star Carter moves between two worlds, the poor black neighborhood where she lives and the fancy suburban prep school she attends. The uneasy balance between these worlds is shattered when Star witnesses the fatal shooting of her childhood best friend, Khalil, at the hands of a police officer. Khalil was unarmed. Soon afterwards, Khalil's death is a national headline. Some are calling him a thug, maybe even a drug dealer and a gangbanger. Star's best friend at school suggests he might have had it coming. When it becomes clear the police have little interest in investigating the incident, protesters take to the streets and Star's neighborhood becomes a war zone. What everyone wants to know is, what really went down that night? And the only person alive who can answer that is Star. But what Star does or does not say could destroy her community. It could also endanger her life. Angie Thomas's searing debut about an ordinary girl in extraordinary circumstances addresses issues of racism and police violence with intelligence, heart, and unflinching honesty. So I love this book because if any young adult book could change the world, I truly believe it would be this one. This book is inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement, and for a young adult novel, it would model for kids to stand up for what they believe in. The book puts the reader in the shoes of Star Carter, a girl whose character and whose situation naturally inspires empathy. The story focuses on Star's personal life and big social issues teenagers deal with in modern day America, plus her navigating the subtle acts of racism she sees from her peers. She faces tragedy and choices that are unfortunately all too common to young adults in our world today, but the author puts such a heartfelt spin on it that you can't help to identify with her. The characters feel real, like this is a real story, which in kind of a way it is. They all have depth and they're all relatable and interesting and the problems they face are real world issues. We get to see ourselves mirrored in these characters. Plus, Star is stuck between two worlds and has to learn how to move back and forth between the two. A problem that many of us face in our young adult lives, whether it's at school or at home or even with friends. Watching her navigate through these worlds somehow allows you to identify with her. And I think everyone could see a bit of themselves in her character. This book deals with friendships in the face of subtle racism and racial tensions, the importance of keeping your family united, even if it means you have different views and what it really means to seek out a life that is better for yourself and your family. The writing style draws you in, but it keeps you reading. And the narrative is so raw and real. The story is necessary. It's rare a teen book that deals with big civil rights issues in the modern world that we shouldn't have to, but we do worry about. And all the issues addressed in this book, like racism and sexism and homophobia, they're all handled well, not misrepresented or shown one-dimensionally. It's important for kids of our age to be educated in these social justice issues, and more importantly, to be able to see themselves reflected in literature and see their situations reflected in literature. Plus, it's been on the number one New York Times bestseller list since it came out, and it won the Coretta Scott King Award for Nonviolent Social Change. And on top of that, received the Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. And John Green, the author of The Fault in Our Stars and Looking for Alaska, even called this book the classic of our time. And if all that wasn't enough to get you hooked, I'm going to read you a passage from the book itself from the point of view of Star. Once upon a time, there was a hazel-eyed boy with dimples. I called him Khalil, but the world called him a thug. He lived, but not nearly long enough, and for the rest of my life, I'll remember how he died. Fairy tale? No, but I'm not giving up on a better ending. Yet I think it'll change one day. How? I don't know. When? I definitely don't know. Why? Because there will always be somebody ready to fight. Maybe it's my turn. Others are fighting too, even in the garden, where sometimes it feels like there's not a lot of worth fighting for. People are realizing and shouting and marching and demanding. They're not forgetting. I think that's the most important part. Khalil, I'll never forget. I'll never give up and I'll never be quiet. I promise. Here are some of the major themes of the novel itself. The first and probably most important is that The Hate You Give explores the relationship between race and identity as Star struggles to navigate the primarily black world of Garden Heights and the primarily white world of Williamson Prep. Secondly, The Hate You Give examines the way society uses stereotypes of black people to justify violence and racism against them. 
These stereotypes protect white communities, such as the students at Star School, from reflecting upon systemic racism, which perpetuates discrimination. Finally, underlying the traumatic events of the Hate You Give is the cyclical nature of racialized poverty, which Star's father explains to her during their conversation about Tupac's phrase, thug life, which you can see is on the front cover right here. Thug, right there. Thug life, for those who don't know, is actually an acrostic that stands for the hate you give little infants, Fs everybody. According to Tupac, widespread racism keeps black communities from the protection from police brutality, as well as opportunities and resources needed for financial prosperity. And poverty feeds on itself and it affects generations of black families. This cycle entraps many of the hate you gives black characters into a situation where they cannot escape poverty without relying on the drug trade, which when it is used, it's used to devalue them as people in both life and death. So The Hate You Give is most likely a book I would teach to high schoolers, as the concepts and some of the language of the book is definitely set more towards a mature audience. Plus, because I want to teach in an urban school where students are more likely to have seen or even experienced some of the issues raised in the book, I think this novel would be good to teach in order for my students to identify with the situation and to engage in the social justice problems that not only the main characters face, but that they might have even faced in their own lives. This book confronts issues that teenagers are dealing with today, even though we don't want to admit it to ourselves. They're trying to find their voices and should be educated on how to do so and how to raise awareness in the realm of social justice. This novel would, potentially, inspire class discussion and would help to raise social justice awareness in my students. In terms of concepts I would teach with this novel, here are some of the ideas that I thought of when reading the book for the first time. In terms of social emotional learning, I would teach on the difference between sympathy, which is feeling compassion for another person's hardships, and empathy, which is actually putting yourselves in the shoes of another person. The main character, Star, in this book, subconsciously faces examples of sympathy versus empathy throughout the entire novel. And I would give my students these examples in order to have them identify the concepts and then choose which one they think should be used in that particular situation. That would help to raise awareness on sympathy versus empathy. So in regards to actual English content when it comes to this book, I would focus on code switching and its relation to the English language. So code switching is when someone alternates between one or more different ways of speaking, so dialects, languages, etc. in the context of a single conversation in order to be accepted by the opposite group of people. So for example, Star feels pulled between her Garden Heights self and her Williamson Prep self, and she switches her speech and her mannerisms and behaviors to fit whichever circumstance she finds herself in. After Khalil's shooting especially, she is reluctant to speak about his death because her white friends, Haley and Maya, and her white boyfriend, Chris, may not understand everything that happens in her Garden Heights world. Star feels simultaneously too black to talk about Khalil's life and death with her school peers, but also too white at home in Garden Heights to stand up for him. And again, I would concentrate on the elements of social justice awareness and would use the literature as a mirror of sorts to expose and help the students identify this cycle of hatred in inner city communities. I could even relate the lyrical poetry of Langston Hughes and the Harlem Renaissance to this novel. For example, we might study theme for English B, which discusses the racial disparity in the education system. Or we would talk about I Too Sing America, which demands that African Americans have a seat at the table of the nation that is widely recognized. Both of which are themes represented in The Hate You Give. So I also thought of some activities and lesson plan ideas for this novel. The first would be a children's book comparison to The Other Side by Jacqueline Woodson, which is a book that deals with many similar issues as The Hate You Give, just in a children's book form. My class could study the reader's theater or the read aloud version of the story. Then we could read some informational text articles because this is obviously a current day social justice problem, and I would have the students analyze those with me in class. Each of these three articles that I found deal with the author, Angie Thomas, and why she decided to write on such a piercing issue as police brutality, simultaneously delving into deeper issues such as the cycle of hatred and stereotypes that justify violence towards a certain race and racialized poverty. I would also probably look at recent laws that have been passed or documents or recent cases that have to do with police brutality and then have a debate in class over these where students could pick one side or the other and then they would have to defend it. So the next idea I had is one that I'm actually going to use for almost every novel that my students and I study in class, and it's one that I'm very passionate about as well, and it's called word graffiti. 
So my word graffiti wall will be posted on black construction paper over a door in my classroom, probably a closet door or something like that. And for each new book that we read, students are going to pick one quote or an important word or an important phrase or something that they think summarizes something important in the book. And they're going to write it in white marker or Sharpie or something like that on the wall. Then they're going to have to write me a paragraph rationale as to why this quote or this phrase or this lyric or something like that is important to them and to the book. And in terms of a final project for this book, I think it would have to be as creative as possible. This book is very creative. I would have my students probably write a rap or a lyrical poem like Langston Hughes that deals with a particular social justice issue. I would allow my students to pick one that I would verify before they write about and then they could take their creative spin with it. So on top of those ideas, I found several recommended books for those who like this novel that I could keep in my classroom. The first is called American Street, which is a book about a young girl who immigrates to America with her mother from Haiti, but her mother is detained at customs, leaving her to fend for herself in a brand new country. The second is called Turning 15 on the Road to Freedom, which is about a girl, a 15-year-old girl, who marches on Selma. The third is called Dear Martin, and it's a book about an Ivy League-bound African-American student who becomes a victim of racial profiling. The fourth is Ghost Boys, and it's another story documenting a young black boy who is killed by a police officer. Similar to this book is How It Went Down, which is yet another book that explains the outcome of a racially charged shooting just like In the Hate You Give. Then comes All American Boys, which deals with teenage boys who face the outcome of a racially divided high school. Next is Piecing Me Together, which tells the story of an ambitious African-American high school student who faces racial profiling in her journey. And finally is March Forward Girl, and it's the memoir of the author, Melba Beals, and it gives details on her life growing up in the Jim Crow South. So in conclusion, I think this would be a great book to study in high school because it's not a difficult read. And this is a book that my students could read for homework and then compare to other mentor texts in class, or we could even assign this book for book clubs in class. What's more important to me about this book is the discussions of social justice that would arise in context of the book and the importance it is to educate young people on awareness of social justice so that they can stand up for what they believe in. Now I thought I'd read some reviews from the back of the book to let you know what other people think about the book. So before I jump into any teaching possibilities for this book, I wanted to tell you some of the major themes of the novel itself. So the first and most, <laughs> am I Australian? Version of the story. Then we would read of the story. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Deal with the author, Angie Thomas, and why she decided to write on such a piercing issue as police brutality. Piercing, I keep doing that! Oh, no. On top of all those ideas, I also found several. Hi, several. Nice to meet you. I'm Yulea. On top of all those ideas, I found se all of those. That's so cocky. For those who like this novel that I could keep in my classroom, I forgot to look up the authors for these books. Oops. <laughs> Let me do that next day. Social justice issue. <laughs> issue. For kids our age to be of our age. Ah! Oh, yeah.